In today's video, we shall be discussing about the Compton effect. Now, the particle nature of light was uh, clearly demonstrated by American physicist Arthur H. Compton. in the year 1923 and uh, while investigating the scattering of x-rays by different substances he discovered a phenomenon which is now known as the Compton effect. Now Compton discovered that the x-rays of wavelength uh, supposedly we uh, put it as lambda naught they are sent through a metallic we'll be doing the uh, diagram for that uh, so schematic form. So if a certain wavelength that is the uh, wavelength of the x-rays Let us say it is some value. It is sent through a metallic block and it gets scattered The spectrum of the scattered radiation making angle a certain angle with the incident direction consists of two components a component Whose wavelength is the same as that of the incident radiation and it is called as the unmodified line or the Thomson component and the component whose wavelength uh, which is different or probably greater than the incident wavelength and is called as the modified line or the Compton component. There I have mentioned about the unmodified line which is the Thomson component which is lambda naught that is the incident wavelength and the modified line with the, comp with the Compton component with uh, a different wavelength. Now, in the illustration that I have provided, it shows the scattering process between a single photon and an electron at rest. Now, initially, the photon has energy E0 and momentum P0 with a frequency nu0. And it travels along that direction and uh, it strikes the electron, which is at rest. Now, with the experiment, he also observed the following facts that the difference that is uh, del lambda which is the difference in the uh, scattered wavelength to the incident wavelength that is always positive greater than zero and uh, this uh, difference increases with the increase in angle theta which is the uh, which is the angle between the direction of the incidence and the direction of scattering and uh, it only depends on theta and it does not depend on anything else uh, such as the uh, incident wavelength as well. Now, all these observations that were made by Compton, they could not be explained by the classical theories. So, quantum theory could, however, explain all these things uh, beautifully. So, let's uh, get into that. Now, Compton interpreted the scattering with the change of wavelength as a process of elastic collision between the X-ray photons and the almost free electrons. The electrons weakly bound to their atoms can be considered as free electrons because their binding energy is negligible, uh, negligibly small compared to that of the energy of the incident photons. Now, as I had described about the illustration, so the incident energy that was possessed by the photon is E0, which is equal to H nu0, which is the Planck's constant times of the frequency. And therefore, we have E to be equal to P multiplied to C for the photon, and that is equal to P C naught. P uh, here is P naught for the photon. So we have the value of P naught to be equal to uh, H nu naught over C from the, from the equations that we have. Now, the electron, which was at a rest, the rest mass energy of electron, so the rest energy for electron, this is for the photon and incident photon that is. And so the rest energy for electron uh, is uh, going to be E1, which is equal to, uh, we, we are not taking it as E1 as of now. We will be taking it as simply MEC squared right and its momentum is zero so at while it's, it is at rest its momentum is zero and uh, then the collision happens as uh, we can see in the illustration the scattered photon has the energy e1 so e1 is the energy scat of the scattered photon 
at the top. So the scattered photon has an energy E1 and a momentum P1 where E1 is equal to H nu 1 and P1 as we know is equal to H nu 1 over C that is the speed of light. The scattered photon moves in a direction at an angle theta with respect to the direction of incidence and the electron moves away from the energy uh, with an energy and momentum in a direction which is taken as phi as we can see in the figure with respect to the direction of incidence. And it is assumed that uh, the incident photon and the electron form an uh, isolated system during the short time interval in which the collision takes place. And the principle of conservation of linear momentum and energy can therefore be applied. So as per the principle of conservation of energy, what we have is that uh, for the initial stage, the initial energy of the system so as per the conservation of energy we can apply that as uh, e naught being equal to the energy of the incident photon plus m m e c squared is the mass uh, of uh, electron multiplied to the square of uh, speed of light and we have e1 and e e which is the energy now possessed by the electron when it is having certain momentum as it travels after uh, re after the recoil and so we have e1 plus and as far as the uh, velocity of the momentum is concerned uh, we uh, velocity of the electron is concerned so we have the momentum of the electron over here in this is a relativist case so we are taking it as p e c square p e square c squared plus m e squared c to the power 4 the common case where we are considering the relativistic uh, energy over here so and this is as per the conservation of energy is concerned now as far as the conservation of momentum is concerned so from the conservation of momentum conservation of momentum what we have is we have the initial momentum of the electron to be zero so we are only having the momentum of the photon which, which is p naught as indicated in the figure and we have p1 plus p e to be the final momentum of the system so what we get from here is p naught minus p1 is going to be the p e over there now we have a PE squared term in the energy consideration. So PE squared is nothing but uh, PE dot PE. So that is going to be equal to P naught minus P1 taken vectorially and uh, P naught minus P1. So this is going to give us P naught squared minus two times of P naught dot P1 and plus p1 squared so we have this p e squared now to be equal to this is the scalar form obviously the square of the momentum so we have p naught p1 and their dot product is going to have cos theta component over there cosine of theta plus p1 squared so this is what we get for p e squared and uh, as far as the equation concerning the energy we have uh, this value over here to be equal to so from this thing over here what we can get is uh, we can take the e1 onto the left hand side so we have e0 minus e1 on the left hand side plus mec squared and that uh, will be equal to this entire thing that is p e squared c squared plus m e squared c raised to the power 4 entirely taken under root or to the power half so if we square both the sides what we get is uh, something of uh, this kind we take the m e c c to m e square c to the power 4 to the left hand side and uh, what we get over there is so we end up like this where we have taken me squared c to the power 4 to the other side and we have obtained this kind of uh, value 
now we can put the value of pe square that we have obtained over here that is considering the uh, vector form uh, the the angle involved in that so what we get is that to be equal to e naught minus e1 whole squared plus the terms on the left hand side remain the same there's not much difference in that but what about the right hand side well we can take the c square over here and for p e squared we can put the value over there that we have uh, obtained so p naught square minus two times of p1 p2 cosine of theta plus this is p1 squared so this is the uh, value that we have put for p e square that we had obtained and if we go on to see that we multiply that c squared term within that bracket so we take in take it into the bracket we get p naught c square p naught square c square which is e naught square and uh, similarly we have the other values as well so i'll be taking that to the next page So just to save your time, I have written it beforehand. So we have this, uh, we had this equation over there. Instead of uh, p naught square c square, we have e naught squared on the right hand side. P naught c is equal to e naught, and p naught uh, p one c is equal to e one. So we have put those values over there and modified that equation. That finally yields e naught minus e one. Uh, m e c squared is equal to e naught times of e1 one, uh, one minus cos theta the first terms on the left and the right they cancel out and uh, we divide this further by this factor e naught e1 m e c squared so that yields uh, the difference in the reciprocal of the energies on the left hand side and uh, the the form that we see on the right hand side carrying one minus cos theta so if we further modify we know that e1 is equal to h nu 1 and also e naught is equal to h nu naught so we keep those new and new values that is the frequencies over there we cross uh, multiply the h onto the right hand side top of the right hand side and we borrow the c that is there in the denominator one of the c's goes to the left hand side at the top so we have c that is this velocity of light over nu 1 to give me lambda 1 and c over nu naught to give lambda naught which is the difference in wavelength that we were considering and that has given the value that we have obtained onto the right hand side now with this this lambda 1 is obviously the wavelength of the scattered photon while uh, lambda naught is the wavelength that is associated with the incident photon and we note that uh, this value this uh, factor h over mec that is going to have a dimension same as that of the length and the and the value that we have because they are constant constant terms because the mass of the electron is rest mass that is that is constant for the electron so we put that value over there so this is 2.424 times of uh, 10 to the power minus 12 uh, meters that is in meters so approximately 0 0.02424 angstrom units and this is 1 minus cos theta multiplied to 1 minus cos theta now this is this value that we have obtained over here that is known as the Compton wavelength and uh, of the electron and is uh, usually denoted by lambda e so lambda e times of uh, 1 minus cos theta is what we are getting over here and uh, as far as uh, this cos 1 minus cos cosine of theta can also be uh, modified as uh, simply as because it is Compton wavelength so we would rather write it as lambda c rather than lambda e and uh, this uh, 1 minus cosine of theta we can take it as uh, 2 times of uh, sine squared theta over 2 that is half of the scattered angle so we know that the Compton shift that has taken place that is uh, del lambda that depends upon the angle of scattering only and is independent of the wavelength of the incident photon so lambda naught is not involved in the right hand side of the reaction of the equation sorry and uh, for theta being equal to 0 we have the energies to be the same that is e1 is equal to e naught and lambda 1 is equal to lambda naught 
and uh, uh, that is the, the the incident and the scattered photons have the same energy and the same wavelength at uh, theta being equal to zero while in case of uh, this this one minus cos theta factor being positive we have uh, that is the case we have over here so here we have e1 to be less than e0 while we have lambda 1 to be greater than lambda naught so that, that is the energy of the scattered photon is less than that of the incident photon and the corresponding energy difference is carried by the scattered electron so the energy is conserved obviously now for theta is equal to 90 degrees we have the cosine theta to be equal to zero and uh, therefore the shift is directly equal to uh, that is del lambda is directly equal to uh, the Compton wavelength for uh, theta being equal to 90 degrees. So these are some of the cases that we are just considering from the results uh, results that we have obtained. And as far as uh, 180 degree angle is concerned, we have uh, for theta is equal to 180 degrees, we have uh, del lambda is equal to two times of the uh, Compton wavelength. So the Compton shift ranges it ranges uh, from uh, theta is equal to zero degree uh, theta is equal to zero degree to theta is equal to 180 degrees and uh, we, we we can since we have the dependence factor we can plot a variation of the del lambda with respect to theta and it comes out to be something like this so the, the, this is the variation a shift at 90 degree was detected by Compton in 1923 by the scattering uh, scattering the characteristic uh, K alpha line for the radiation of uh, molybdenum uh, from a carbon block. Now, as far as the electron is concerned, we can uh, obtain the kinetic energy of the scattered or the recoiled electron and uh, so the kinetic energy for electron that we have over here uh, let us take the, that as k that is ee e, that is uh, the rest that is the energy that is possessed minus the rest energy and that is definitely going to be equal to e naught minus e1 which is the difference in energy to the incident photon and the scattered photon because uh, the remainder energy is taken up by the electron and so that is equal to h nu naught minus nu 1 and uh, that is equal to hc times of 1 over lambda naught minus 1 over lambda 1 but uh, uh, as as we uh, we can calculate that so we have hc we take the lambda naught outside and this thing over here is lambda 1 minus lambda naught over lambda 1 so uh, but c over lambda naught is simply nu naught and uh, lambda 1 is equal to lambda naught plus del lambda so what we get over here is that we can get a better equation than we have at hand so c over lambda naught is nu naught this is the incident frequency and this is 2 times of the Compton wavelength sine squared uh, theta over 2 entirely divided by lambda naught plus uh, 2 times of uh, lambda C uh, sine squared theta over 2. Now all of that factor eventually shows us that the kinetic energy of the scattered electron is directly proportional to the energy of the photon. And therefore, Compton effect can be observed only in the dom domain of short wavelength or high frequency. So that's it from this video, this uh, first uh, introductory video on Compton scattering. We will be discussing a bit more on this uh, if uh, we have, uh, if we make a video, I'll try and make another video on this, uh, an extended one. So till then, thank you for watching.